In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at a clip where Bonnie Ross inadvertently admits to copying other franchises when it comes to Halo. So stick around. Hello everyone, and thank you for joining me here today. So there's an interview that has been recently brought to my attention by a fellow YouTuber called Sean W. Big shout out to him for bringing this up. The BBC did an interview with Bonnie Ross talking about Halo 4, Halo 5, and coincidentally, Halo Infinite. Now, this article and video, of course, have not been publicized. It's not been made a big deal of. And this is the only place that I have seen it is on the BBC's website. I don't even know if they have uploaded it to YouTube. But let's go ahead and take a look at it right now. What do you think you got right about Halo 4 and Halo 5? And what do you think you got wrong about those games? And how has that affected this new Halo title? Now, that's a great question. I think with Halo 4, we told a beautiful story. I think that I'm really proud of what we did with campaign, but I, I think we fell down with multiplayer. Uh, you know, I think we were trying to probably do some me too's with some other, um, trying to focus on what other um, games were doing versus thinking about Halo. With Halo 5, it's kind of like we reversed our learning. I think that the Halo 5 story it's a fine story. I don't think it's a great Halo story with Master Chief at the focus. And um, and then, but then on multiplayer, I'm incredibly proud with what we did with multiplayer. So third time up at the bat, I, you know, I, I hope that we learned and we're bringing them both together and making sure that we get it right this time. One of the most important things about this game for most people will be multiplayer. Technically, we're not talking about anything multiplayer with this feat. Player, the one thing I will say is it's definitely all within the how are we really taking the heart of what is Halo and then evolving it in a very deliberate manner um, versus doing something that doesn't feel like Halo. And now the language in this clip with her in this interview is a bit sketchy. And if you don't really listen closely, you might not understand what she's saying. When she talks about Halo 4, and what the game did in the multiplayer. She says, we did a lot of me too's looking at other games as well. Now that's a very peculiar term to use, me too's. It's a very efficient way of saying that we looked at what other games were doing at the time and we essentially copied them. And that was a huge, huge complaint in the Halo 4 community at the time, especially people coming from Bungie's classic Halo and even Halo Reach to a point into Halo 4 was there were kill streaks, there were class abilities, there were custom loadouts. They essentially just adapted what was in Halo and created things specifically for Halo that copied Call of Duty's multiplayer gameplay formula in a sense. Now, there's also some very peculiar language in here when her talking about Halo 5 as well. She said that they were incredibly proud of the multiplayer, which again, to many fans that grew up with the franchise is quite divisive. There are those that absolutely love it. And they think it's the best Halo ever, but there are also those that don't particularly take to away Halo 5 plays. And she says that they are incredibly proud of what they did with the multiplayer, but not so much with the campaign. She even goes as far as to say that Halo 5 was not a good Halo story. It didn't have Master Chief at its focus. I think that the Halo 5 story, it's a fine story. I don't think it's a great Halo story with Master Chief at the focus. Now, it's also very interesting looking back at previous articles at the time when it was announced essentially that Halo 4 was coming out and that 343 Industries was going to be taking over the franchise and bringing it in their own direction. Not only did they talk about it being the Reclaimer trilogy, Eventually, at some point, they talked about it being the Reclaimer saga. And all of this at the time, they were heavily, heavily saying that this is the Master Chief story. And, you know, where can you take the Master Chief as already being a hero? What's the next step in the hero's journey? And then seemingly with Halo 5, they had just decided to abandon all of that. The one thing that I've noticed so far with Halo 4 and Halo 5, and from what we're able to glean from Halo Infinite, 343 is constantly shifting the story. They can't really seem to keep a focused narrative. 
And now, of course, with Halo Infinite, they're seemingly throwing Halo 4 in the toilet and Halo 5 in the toilet. And they're going with you're the Master Chief, you're on a Halo ring, and you're fighting the Banished. And that's as much as we get. There's nothing in this new story so far that we've seen from what they've given us that would lead us to believe that there's callbacks or references or that anything that happened previously in the story is impacting the story in Halo Infinite now. And that is the actual complete opposite of the way that Bungie wrote the previous games. Now, Halo 2 obviously ended on a cliffhanger, and a lot of people were pissed off about that. But Halo 3, everything comes to a head in Halo 3. The flood that you uncover in Combat Evolved, the problems with the truth, the covenant, and the brutes from Halo 2, everything gets wrapped up in Halo 3. They don't abandon the plot points from the previous games. Everything gets tied up together with a nice little bow on it in the finish. There's another clip here with Bonnie Ross that I would like to address. This is from IGN's interview with her with Ryan McCaffrey from Unfiltered. And of course, during the interview when talking about Halo Infinite, he brings up Apex Legends and Battle Royale. Now keep in mind, this is back in February of 2019. Towards the end, it was right after Apex Legends kind of blew up for the time being. And her whole mannerisms begin to change when talking about the Battle Royale mode. I highly recommend you guys look at the entire interview with her. If you haven't seen this already, I'll put the link in the description for it. But she starts to talk very quietly, almost at a whisper. And this is very telling. And she also has this nervous tick where she constantly puts her hand up to adjust the hair on the side of her head. Now again, this could just be because she's really nervous doing an interview about a game and she's making sure that she doesn't let slip certain details that she's not supposed to. But it can also be a nervous tick that people do when they're not being truthful when they're talking to you. Halo, as far as, uh, you know, do you see it as a responsibility to both a single player universe that you came to Halo for and, and the multiplayer side of things that that it's, you know, that the, the industry seems to be pushing a little more towards on the games as a service side. Yeah, and I'll step back and answer a, a little bit um, broader on that. I think Halo does serve, I mean, a lot of, you know, we have research on what players um, play, but when you look at what our DNA is and you look at research on people, it, it is a beloved story and it is like a perfectly orchestrated sandbox for a multiplayer um, as well. So the topic du jour, I can't not have you sitting here and, and ask you about I mean, Battle Royale, right? It's, it's, the, <laughs> it's the big thing now. As we record this at, at the DICE conference in Las Vegas, Apex Legends, Legends has, has taken yes. off like a rocket. I mean, the Respawn super talented team, and they've got, they're over, they're like 25 million total players yeah. right now. Uh, I mean, it, it is, what do, you, what do you guys see? I'll phrase it this way. At, at 343, how are you guys looking at that as as uh, yeah. the the you know curators and and protectors of Halo and you're responsible for growing the IP but also and the business like what what do you see when you see you know the Fortnites and the and the Apex Legends out there in this in this genre that you could go into if yeah. you decided it was the way to go like uh, how do you guys see it Yeah you know I think that ever since um, PUBG and, and Fortnite we've definitely had um, you know, people on social saying, like, we definitely want a Halo Battle Royale. I think that um, Vince and team did a great job with Apex Legends. And even within the studio, um, it, it maybe they've taken some pieces out that you could think about. You could see much more like, hey, you could do this with Halo. You know, I mean, like, I think some of the things that they've done with Apex, like, they kind of, for us, kind of feels a bit more like Halo. I mean, like, I think some of the things that they've done with Apex, like, they kind of, for us, kind of feels a bit more like Halo. I will say that we have conversations all the time on, like, what the right uh, thing to do is. Whatever we do, we have a sandbox that gives us the ability to have multiple different game types. I'm not yeah. committing what the team wants to I mean, that doesn't want to be a... a I think whatever we do needs to be the right thing for Halo. Sure. And so whether or not you call it the Battle Royale or how we're thinking about things going forward, the team definitely thinks about this needs to be right for Halo. So within this clip that I've just shown you, she discusses Halo Infinite's story and the previous importances 
of the previous titles stories themselves all while having this nervous tick while she, where she keeps touching her face and moving her hair and then of course after the topic of battle royale is brought up and she kind of tiptoes around that talking about well if you call it battle royale she then also at that exact same time begins to touch her face and move her hair out of the way this is to me most certainly a sign that at the time the story was probably in and probably still is considering the game's been delayed and Joseph Staten's been brought back in extreme jeopardy. And the fact also bringing it up talking about multiplayer and battle royale, they're probably most certainly going to have a mode that closest resembles a battle royale mode in some way, shape, or form, but it's not going to be called battle royale. And moving on, there's also a point here in the video when Ryan, and this is before we knew that the Xbox Series X was called the X and that it was going to be launching when it is in November and that Halo was going to be a launch title for it. And he asks Bonnie Ross, do you think it's important for Halo to be a launch title? And she starts to talk about how Halo 1 had it and Halo 2 came out after and then Halo 3 came out, and she makes a very, very, very odd statement, saying that at the time when Halo 3 came out, it had no competition. For those of you that may not have been around or may have been a little too young, Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare launched and essentially blew up, and it was its biggest competitor, but there was also Bioshock that came out that year. There was also Mass Effect that came out that year, and while... Of course, those are different genres. They're not first-person shooters. These games, in their own right, became huge juggernauts of a franchise. And Call of Duty, of course, already was a big franchise, but the Modern Warfare entry, the first one, really caused it to blow up. And for a very long time, Call of Duty and Halo 3 battled the top spot for the most played game on Xbox Live. And essentially, Halo 3 eventually lost. It ended up being overtaken by Modern Warfare. But for her to say that there was no competition, one is just flat out wrong. So she either does not know what she's talking about, which is a good chance, or she's just outright lying about it. Now, when it comes to Halo Infinite, they've been extremely, extremely secretive. We've only been given very small tidbits of information. And honestly, with these last few interviews, of course, one of them being over a year ago now at this point, She's not able to actually answer the questions that the interviewers are asking, so she does have to tiptoe around them. But you can gleam some information, one from her body language, and two, of course, by the way, she is answering the questions that are being asked. But as always, don't forget, in order to be part of the conversation and have your voice heard, hit that subscribe button and leave me a comment in the section down below. If you guys are new around here, check out some of my previous videos. I upload content weekly. And don't forget to check out the links in the description. I've got my social media. And of course, monetary support for the channel is there as well. But until next time, everyone, thank you all for joining me here today. And I'll see all of you in the next video.